Hello everybody and welcome to a new player tip video. We're here talking about Dexter Drake, which Eric, you actually have played Dexter, so you might be able to like know a little bit about Dexter for this no, one. No, I'm excited to learn because <laughs> if you haven't seen the video, Dexter and I played bad and then died. <laughs> All right, well, let's look at Dexter Drake. So I'm gonna just say right now, Dexter is a very simple investigator in terms of what you can do with him. But there's a lot that makes Dexter complex that we're gonna, I'm gonna try to help give some thought here on. But I will also say a little asterisk on this. I'm still learning Dexter Drake. Most of my Dexters crash and burn to health damage, funnily enough. He just like dies, like that two foot. It's just like, his name is Dex Dexter, but he's just really slow. <laughs> um, so like, I'm just gonna put that little caveat on this that I, I'm still learning Dexter. But these are like new tips that I've been learning as I've been playing Dexter more and more. And also seeing Bryn play Dexter, because Bryn plays Dexter very well. Mm. But I think that's just because Bryn plays with the utmost confidence at all times. And I don't know if he's actually panicking or if things are going okay. <laughs> like Bryn is always like close to death, but it's like he means to be. But like maybe he doesn't, right? Like maybe he's inside looking at his hand being like, I'm, I'm fucked. Anyway. Dexter's 5232, two, and as a lightning bullet during your turn, you can discard an asset you control to play an asset with a different title from your hand, reducing its cost by one limit once per round. Elder Sign Effect is plus two. You may return an asset from your play area to your hand, then draw one card. Our favorite magician, Dexter Drake, is all about swapping assets, granting them reduced cost and no action. Nice and simple, and this is what the key of Dexter is going to be. Cheap assets are great for Dexter, especially if they have limited uses or interplay effects here. So Priest of Two Faiths, put three Bless tokens in, soaks for you, gets turned into something else. Liquid Courage costs one. Notably, they're all free when you use Dexter's ability, but they also can heal horror from you. Scroll of Secrets is also really nice because it allows you to look at the bottom uh, card of any deck and it's just card draw. Notably, it's something about Scroll of Secrets. We've never played it because we play no taboo, when it's tabooed, that action ability turns into a lightning bolt ability. And as far as I'm concer concerned, that is functional errata. So you should play this way because the card is unplayable if it costs an action. So it's really good when you actually use it for the lightning bolt because this is basically just free car drip card draw and Dexter doesn't really need to use his hands or alternatively, Dexter has a million things in his hands and due to magic, it changes every time you look at him, right? Uh, this is also true for fast assets because they allow you to end up action positive if used with Dexter's ability. So Favor of the Moon, Switchblade. With Favor of the Moon, don't let it discard itself. Use it for two and then get rid of it. Ossification, use the charges, get rid of it, replace it with something else. There are a lot of assets that you can explore with Dexter and it really comes down to like what the goal of your deck is and also your personal taste when playing Dexter. So these are just some things that you can look at, but fast assets and cheap assets and fast cheap assets are really good. This Dashly Magician views assets differently than other investigators and when playing him, you should too. What this means and what was my biggest discovery for Dexter recently was that each asset you play should be treated as if it was expendable, even your spells. Spend those charges, use that soak, and replace it. This is why card draw is really nice for Dexter Drake, because he can replace those cards and like find new cards to play in those spots. You want to like spend your spells just shooting the first thing you see. Don't care if it's inefficient, just zap that rat and then eventually turn that spell into something else. And I think this is where I have my biggest fault with Dexter, because I I get too invested into my assets and i think even my kill spells should eventually be aimed to be out of there and replaced with something else he may not seem like it but dexter is an investigator that rewards players for thinking far ahead and when i say far ahead i mean like with dexter you should have your asset order for like the next eight turns like you should have like at least like an idea of like how you want to be going and you also need to be thinking about a variety of different things that we're going to be getting to. For Dexter, I think that this truly starts at his dex building. I call it the dex building. <laughs> I mean, that is what it is, right? That is what it is. Um, but I think a big problem with me as well with Dexter, and I think this might help for new players, is that you need to like re be playing Dexter from turn negative one. 
when you're building your deck, you need to be thinking about your future as Dexter Drake. If you think you have enough assets in your deck, you're probably going to want to add a few more. I'm pretty sure Bryn plays like 22 to 26 assets in his Dexter Drake. Oh my goodness. Um, Bryn loves assets, and his big playstyle is asset-based, right? It actually works really well, because Bryn plays asset-heavy, Travis plays event heavy, I play skill heavy. We all fit into those holes. And when I watch Bryn play, he just has like a million things. And then when I play Dexter, I play it too much like me, right? And I'm left with like, why I got two asset in play? I can't trigger ability, right? And Bryn's like, has like eight in play. And I'm like, what's happening? Like, how does he do this? And I think it starts at deck building. You're gonna want like, 20 plus assets in your deck probably you want like two-thirds of your deck to be assets i think i could be wrong like i said i'm still learning but i do think that you're going to want to find assets that fill similar roles to events that you want to play when thinking ahead you're always going to have both dexter's ability and dexter's weakness in the back of your mind occult scraps at the wrong time can throw an unexpected wrench into your game plan you know this yeah an occult scraps at the wrong time can be absolutely debilitating it's a very cleverly designed weakness. When it's in your hand, you get minus two brain, so you're down to three. When it's in play, you get minus one. It costs zero, but you can't play it during a play action, which means it only gets into play via Dexter's ability. So you can't play it unless you have an asset in play, and you can't get rid of it unless you use Dexter's ability. So it's like a really clever design. I think it's one of my favorite like signature weaknesses in the game in terms of like an, a, a success for what the character is doing, but you need to be aware of it. So never forget about Occult Scraps if you haven't seen it yet. Assume it's the next card you draw all the time. This means that you're gonna always want a disposable asset in play and another asset in your hand. This is a reason why I said don't get attached to your assets because Sometimes it's just better to kill a one charge shriveling and get your occult scraps out than it is to have minus two brain, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but there is the plus side because then your second play, your occult scraps is going to get turned into something else, which is really cool. However, you're going to need to have that something else to play it. Otherwise, you're just sitting there with your weakness in play. So this once again goes to my point where like, I feel like you want a lot of assets in your deck. This is another thing about um, <clears throat> Dexter that is about thinking ahead and why I mean that you want to have like be thinking like eight turns into the future. And this is something that I recently learned myself. If you have extra actions lying around, ask yourself if Dexter's ability is really necessary to use this turn. Because when you use Dexter's ability, you, go, you don't go a asset positive. You remain asset neutral. And it's probably better to just pay that extra action and resource to put a card into play and have it there for the future and use it. Mm -hmm. You, We say often, why play that investigator if you don't use their ability every turn, right? And the answer to that is because maybe the investigator doesn't work at their peak when they do that. And I think that's true for Dexter. So while yes, it might look inviting to replace um, your Liquid Courage with a Scroll of Secrets or your Priest of Two Faiths with a Scroll of Secrets, just play your Scroll of Secrets because now you have two options as opposed to just one for the future. And I think this was a big discovery for me and I hope, I hope leads to a better Dexter for me in the future. Because I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. But this is basically my question that I ask myself. Maybe it's better to set yourself up better for the future at the cost of a slow turn right now. And that could be true. That could be true. All right. We're out of the, the stuff. We're going to talk about um, the Elder Sign and then uh, a little special little piece of Dexter. Because I always like to end a video with something that's a little bit special. When you draw the Elder Sign, you probably want to return something to your hand, even if you don't feel like you need to. This is something that I saw you do and I do all the time with Dexter. I'm like, I don't need any of this. I don't want, I like, I have my, this example, my Brand of Cthulga has seven charges on it. Why would I want to? But then I watch Bryn play Dexter and Bryn is like, yeah, return this full spell to my hand. And then he just plays it again. 
<laughs> because the thing is, Dexter needs cards, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because he's eventually going to run out of assets. And any card draw you can get is key. So pick up that shriveling that you've used once. Pick up something cheap that has no reason to play again. But just take the card draw, right? Because of the then comma. So this is a, a pretty easy rule to remember in Arkham. Anytime there's a then comma, you don't get to do what's after the comma if you don't do the thing before. So if you don't return the card from your a play area to your hand, you don't get to draw the card to replace it. So just return the card to your hand. It took me forever to realize that those boxes were the charges. Oh, <laughs> you're like, what's going on here? <laughs> I was like, Justin, what have you done? Yeah, especially because we don't use those tokens in real life. No. Yeah, we just use these dice. Yeah. Oh, I should have just photoshopped a six and a seven die on it. Wouldn't that be fun? That would have been... Everyone yeah. would have been like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> yeah, so it, it this is like for me, because I would get the Elder Stein and be like, no, I want all this in play. I have my two assets. What do I need these for? <laughs> But that's like also the thing, right? Like going back to my previous point here, which is about if you have extra lion actions lying around, just play it. Because that's something you could then just no penalty pick back into your hand. And you don't get your game plan fucked up because of it. So do that. Don't be like me. Be like Brim. <laughs> just pick up your full shriveling to draw a card. Because the thing is, it's Dexter is mystic rogue so his economy is very good mm -hmm. right his money economy is very good and his action economy is very good and if you need that shriveling back in play you're going to be able to play it fast right so turn it into a card draw even if you lost some resources because that shriveling might have been in play for a while because dexter's whole thing is that he's all tiny wimey right like things change because he's doing magic yeah so like that shriveling you might have even actually played for free anyway so playing it normally is actually going to be totally fine as well mm -hmm. so just something to be aware of all right let's talk about one last awesome niche that dexter can play really well and i do think that if you were going to play dexter now this would be something that I think would work better for you than that Dexter deck you played, which is Doom Cards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, these are all cards that get Doom placed on them. Doom is a cost that goes on something that is very powerful in theory, but for a negative is the fact that there's Doom on them. And the whole thing is that they're hard to get rid of. But Dexter has a panic button built onto his investigator card. He can utilize the Doom cards with no downside. Uh, just use magic and turn them into something else. A good example of this is the Blood Pack that you can see just right here. Uh, this is an asset where you can add a Doom to get plus two brain or plus two fist limit once per test. You play this for one when fast because of Dexter's ability, use it a few times and then turn it into something else. Same with Arcane Initiate and David Renfield. Um, their downside is that you need to be aware of when and how are you going to kill them. And Dexter says, they're already fucking dead. <laughs> right? Like, Dexter just looks at them and be like, no problem. It's this liquid courage. It's this flask I have. It's this... You saw David Renfield? He's now this scroll of secrets, right? He can saw these people in half and no one questions it. <laughs> he just gets to keep going. Who's really doomed now? <laughs> Amen. So, uh, I, I haven't played the Doom Dexter, but I also want to give it a shot. But I actually played him with Blood Pact, and it works really nice for him. Yeah. Um, you don't need to do only Doom, but, like, if you're playing, like, Arcane Initiate, it's great card selection, especially if you're going to be playing a bunch of spell assets. So, and it's a cheap asset, too. Like, Arcane Initiate and Dexter go hand in hand. That's Dexter. I wish I'd known this before I Dextered. Mm -hmm. But now I can Dexter in the future. Heck yeah. Yeah. I also, this actually made me want to play Dexter again. I love him. He has such a good card pool, but I just think I suck at playing him. I think I, and I'm learning. Maybe I'm that's, learning. maybe that's where you go next. Maybe. Oh, well, it could be fun. I actually wouldn't be opposed to that. We'll see. We'll see. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Next week, we're going to be talking about a very, well, in two weeks, we're going to be talking about a very interesting character um, Kelvin Wright, which is a survivor that has all zero for his stats. So I'm excited to give Eric a bit more perspective on how you can utilize um, Kelvin to great success. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. And as always, a GG's.